Hi guys, uh, Ref Life here again with uh, another episode of my Realism series where I explore Momo's Economy mod. Uh, we'll be featuring other mods and reviewing those as we go. Um, and as you can see, I've got my first truck here, um, the Mercedes-Benz new Actros um, that I was happy to find was qu quite cheap and um, a very good first truck. Um, uh, we'll discuss that in the last episode, unfortunately, with quite poor quality. I have only now realized how to uh, record my screen um, in full resolution um, in spite of having quite an old graphics card and a computer that used to be a beast, just isn't really nowadays anymore. Anyhow, um, so this time I'm also um, using a resolution because the, the point now is to show uh, a little bit more of settings, so I'm hoping to enable you to actually see what I'm doing. Um, so without much further ado, uh, we'll get back to the gameplay, but right now we're kind of a little bit taking a break and all of that to look at what are the best settings for realism in the game. Let's dive right in. Uh, graphics. Uh, I'll, I'll get back to that a little bit. Um, it so depends on your graphics card um, that there are like no universal principles there, but there's there's some things that um, uh, I'd like to discuss. I'll get back to that. Also, uh, well, basically, audio is quick. Um, the backup beeper, realistically, it's on. Uh, you might find it annoying, particularly if you. Um, if you're doing your gaming in a living room where there's other people and they can't keep hearing that backup beeper You might want to turn it off, but realistically it's on also the rumble stripes. Uh, that's that's basically it for here uh, Gameplay now we're getting into it uh, The first ones are just preferences um, fatigue simulation. I, I guess you know um uh, at least during you know my first year or so of um, gaming with a uh, European truck simulator, I figured that I had to have the fatigue simulation on, um, as it brings that element of realism that you have to sleep. Um, but um, the the feel of the fatigue simulation isn't really exactly like the the real thing anyhow uh for those who don't know i i used to be a former trucker uh, i mean i'm i am a former trucker uh, meaning i used to be on the road um and the thing with the fatigue simulation that's kind of missing is that you don't drive you know for 10 11 hours straight and then take the eight hour breaks uh, you stop here and there and everywhere um, y y as you load, unload, and all of that. Uh, and even if you're doing long hauls, you have to stop like every four, four and a half hours. Uh, the, the four and a half is, is your absolute max. So what I used to do was that I had um, kind of four hour sessions, two of those, and then uh, one to two hour session at the end. Meaning that you, you can have three driving sessions for the long hauls. Uh, of four hour, four hour, and then two hours, uh, and that's when you stop to sleep. So, actually, um, I've found that turning the fatigue simulation off and then rather just looking at the in game clock a little bit kind of makes more sense because four hours of in game driving and it's actually kind of a good time to pull over at a gas station and then go grab a cup of coffee or something like that. And you're supposed to then wait for like an hour, at least 45 minutes. Um, but if you wait for an hour, you can stretch your daily driving a little bit if, if you're um, in between the four hour session breaks are at least one hour. So um, actually doing that in game, I, th I think kind of gave a higher level of realism. So I vote for turning the fatigue simulation off. Um, of course, you don't get a ticket or anything like that. And if you use it to drive all through the night and, and kind of, you know, give yourself 24 hour days, um, then it's not realistic. But if, if used realistically, uh, go ahead and turn the fatigue simulation off and try to use the um, um, gas stations and resting spots for for rest in between fire hour uh, sorry four hour sessions of driving 
Uh, traffic offense definitely has to be on. Other, otherwise, you know, you're you're tempted to do whatever as you drive. But um, uh, uh, traffic offense for real it needs to be on. Preferred job length that's entirely your own preference. Uh, route advice for speed limits. Um, it's nice to show the truck limits. Of course, it's a trucking simulator. Uh, it's good to have the route advice for speed warning. Uh, I cannot, for the life of me, figure out why um, the speed warning is not on the actual GPS. Also, I, I never used a route advisor, so in one sense, I kind of wouldn't need it on. Um, whatever, but uh, th that really should have been on the GPS too. Uh, automatic parking dialog? Uh, no, <laughs> there's there's no such easy way out for real. So that that's definitely off for me, but. Of course. I mean, if you see that you you need it, go ahead and turn it on. You might find yourself getting help at a particularly bad spot uh, from a colleague or whatnot. But um, yeah, got that off. <coughs> Keeping root advisor hidden is um, is one that I that is essential to me. I think it um, when it pops up, it just kind of disrupts my imaginary gameplay, and um, I, I, I like to keep that off. The heavy cargo warning screen. Um, well, I really like the uh, truck analysis when you are in the workshop or buying your truck because it, it's taught me a few things about choosing engines and transmissions that I had no idea about. Um, uh, I was never in, involved much <laughs> in choosing trucks for real. Um, so so that, that that's fun kind of in the with the truck analysis, but uh, I don't really need the warning. Um, you um, you pick your truck and then you look at the capabilities of the truck and we'll get back to a little bit of calculations around cargo and w what you can haul with different trucks later um, yeah showing navigation of course um, you could of course turn it off if you want to realistically drive the way I did you would have um because I, I drove truck you know back in the days before GPS um, there was one, one guy who at some point got a GPS I didn't I drove with maps you know so you'd have to get yourself a map of um, of the European truck simulator world and um, like Europe according to SCS and uh, drive with that in your lap then, then you drive realistically and I keep that on parking difficulty I've seen a tutorial that said that it should be random <coughs> to be realistic. Um, I disagree with that. I think that you could just go ahead and put it on skilled because even the skilled parking here are sort of child's play compared to real life situations that you end up in. Um, so um, yeah, just go ahead and put that on. You, you get some, there's, there's enough vari variation of the different places anyhow, so just keep that on. Uh, rain probability, I guess, <coughs> again, a matter of preference, uh, same with these. Transmission type. This this is a good question, because um, you might, and I, I do, have an age shifter. Um, and do I use that all the time? I, I did in the beginning, once I bought it, because it, it's quite expensive. <laughs> you kind of feel like you have to use it all the time then to um, to justify you know buying it. Um, but what I found is that I a little bit look at the truck. So like this Mercedes new Actros is, um, as far as I've understood, typically an automatic. So are the DOFs and the Veco. And, um, but when I get into the um, classic Volvo, for example, then, then I use the age shifter as, as I did in my Volvo truck. Um, uh, Scania also, uh, although I'm, I'm sure n newer of any of these would easily have real automatic then you can also get um, um, stick shift w if you so choose now um, so, so what I do is I did do try to do a little bit of research look at the truck uh, if you see in the interior of the truck that it already has kind of the, the button for the automatic then you know that this would typically be an automatic um, or then you can imagine that you go to the workshop and you install, you know, the um, stick shift yourself and drive with the stick shift, whatever your preference is. Um, but realistically, most newer trucks in Europe have automatic, um, unless you specifically specify that you want the stick shift, which you, for example, would want for a heavy haulage. Um, so for this Mercedes, I I go with the real automatic. Braking intensity and trailer stability need to be all the way to the left. Um, 
that's that's just where it's closest to real world um the breaking intensity could maybe be like one or two notches up um but but i i, I usually keep it there because there's there's some other points later on um like with the retarder and engine brake um that that kind of takes care of that um advanced trailer coupling yeah yeah that you have to be a little more precise that's that's really good uh well, the next step from advanced trailer coupling would be uh, which would be really cool if they introduced particularly if they like if uh, sas wanted to introduce container trucks and stuff that liked like that, that's kind of what i drove uh where in addition to be being precise when backing up you also have to lower the truck under you know the trailer and then lift it up again before you can actually couple um so anyhow yeah advanced trailer coupling on for sure truck speed limiter on has to be on automatic retarder you might you might might think that that's not realistic but um <coughs> the research i've done anyhow uh, i didn't have a retarder in my own truck so i don't i'm not that experienced i've uh, driven retarded trucks but um uh it, it wasn't on the one i had as a regular um the Scania's at least have that technology where the retarder is applied with the foot brake. Uh, so if you drive a Scania, you can go ahead and turn it on, particularly if it's one of the beefed up ones. Um, so I'd, I'd say that, you know, whenever you've gone ahead and tuned your truck and put some extra money in and you've invested in the retarder and an extra engine and stuff, uh, you, you realistically should feel free to take off the automatic retarder too um i wouldn't with my first cheap trucks because it just doesn't i think that's a little bit more of an advanced technology um it's not unrealistic to turn it on trucks might have it um uh, but i'd save it for the beefed up trucks um automatic engine brake however unless you have a modded truck from like the 70s or 60s or you know something like that and then go ahead and turn it on <clears throat> i've only driven once a really old bus i, I guess it must have been from the 80s or something like that that had um a separate foot switch for the engine brake um other than that um all, all the european trucks come with um as far as i know uh, engine brake is supplied with your foot brake just like in the game when you turn this on uh, of course you also have the toggle so you can use that additionally for for some extra power uh, brake power and not use the um, foot brake but you can feel free to put this on automatic engine and electricity start and no um and the same with the automatic drop of liftable axle you turn that off air brake simulation yeah go ahead and turn it on and realistic fuel consumption <coughs> cruise control grid step um I guess realistically it kind of wouldn't would be one kilometer because um, the intervals when you um, when you have a cruise control aren't that big um, I just for preference put it on two um, so that I don't have to click so much uh, smart cruise control well um, I'm not really sure I haven't figured this out um, if the smart cruise control really is a technology that um, that these trucks have um, I, I, I don't really think so but if you go ahead and turn it on <clears throat> you can use the um, increase and decrease cruise control buttons uh, pretty much like you in real life um, set the retarder uh for like an uh, inverse cruise control uh there's no button for retarder cruise control in the game uh so this becomes the closest thing um so because uh, for real um the retarders are not just increase decrease they also have this button where they can uh, activate at a certain um speed so i've put mine uh, I think the tolerance of zero th that that be that becomes not realistic because you would have some slack between your kind of lowest and high uh, low. I mean, the minimum where your regular cruise control keeps your truck going and the maximum where your retarder kicks in, there would be some slack. Uh, I would have preferred that tolerance to be three kilometers per hour because you can be quite exact when you set it. But okay, five 
is the closest thing and then what you do is you kind of just use the um, decrease cruise control button to simulate that you're engaging the retarder cruise control um, <clears throat> so I can get back to that in when driving but um, but that's how I've set it up uh, automatic blinker and cabin accessories of course uh, I don't even know why those are options uh, steering camera rotation I like to keep that on it's off right now because I, I turn it off when parking because um, then when switching from reverse to forward I kind of get dizzy if I don't if I keep that on um, but steering camera rotation I, I like it a lot that's, that's I use that when driving <coughs> but then I have a button for easily turning it off too uh, steering camera rotation on reverse um, to me that just has to be disabled um, so <laughs> that when backing up I I I, I can see straightforward yeah. um, the blinker camera rotation I've never tried even uh, physical camera movement uh, I, I like to keep on and full w with the um, 100% factor regional settings according to your preference so um, those were the gameplay um, settings um, keys and buttons of course I mean this is entirely up to your preference um, but um, I'll just point out some um, that you might want to have easily available on your steering wheel if you have buttons there and which I have then I mean which, which are the uh, functions that I've put over to um, uh, a joystick that I have um, actually I have several um, so uh, also and I'll, I'll try to show this in a separate episode um, I've got some kind of um, homemade setup for uh, shifter buttons and start engine buttons I used an old joystick that I kind of took apart had a little bit of help from my son who's more into electronics than me uh, to figure out kind of how to wire it and then I've uh, bought um, uh, switches for that are um, the, the type that you would put in a boat you know you, you get them uh, in the hardware stores um, so I've got an engine start button I've got um, uh, switch buttons for the gear stick and um, also the engine brake uh, I've got on a button so then I'm left with the toggle and uh, increase de increase decrease I put on the steering wheel um, toggle on um, on one of my game pads uh, trailer brake I put on the joystick so that I have it easily available along with the lift drop axle and trailer axle retarder increase and decrease that one's a little bit interesting because it's supposed to be like a stick that you pull so what I found is that my Logitech joy joystick has this zone control that you can set it comes with a Logitech profiler um, so I, I've, uh, I've set this zone control meaning that if I pull my throttle on the joystick down then uh, it increases the retarder uh, it's the equivalent then of, the, of um, yeah this uh, button I've got a Norwegian keyboard as well as this strange signs um, and decrease um, is pulling it up again so I've got the retarder on my joystick throttle uh, for the best experience uh, differential lock one that you're going to use quite often um, I've put it on my joystick um, alternatively you could put it on your steering wheel uh, left turn and right turn indicator um, well, th that's what I use that joystick that I took apart I've placed it on the left side of my steering wheel and then I've put a pen in the middle of it where the joystick used to be so that it more resembles a turn signal um, stick so um, yeah we've got that on the side um, High beam lights, th that's what I use the um, uh, the paddles on the ste steering wheel I use for high beam and wipers so that I, I've got the high beam on the left and the wipers on the right. Uh, other than that, of course, I mean, beacon on the joystick, you want the air horn available. Um, <clears throat> but basically what I have on the steering wheel are cruise controls, uh, retarder, um, no, sorry, retarder was on my joystick. I've got the cruise control up and down. I've got the dashboard display mode on the steering wheel. Also, the um, engine brake increase and decrease uh, is on the steering wheel. 
Um, other than that, I've put the root advisor. Here we go. Um, the root advisor modes and navigation page info and diagnostic I've, I've put available on buttons. I've got the Logitech G29 and it comes with a quite a good amount of buttons um, so, so um, yeah so I've put that there. Uh, cameras I like to have on the uh, joystick um, with the interior is the fire button and then I've got um, I can switch between lean out chasing um, and um, no sorry uh, interior the, the zoom is on my fire button um, interior on the side yeah I'll show that in a separate episode but I like to have these uh, camera functions on the joystick and of course um, <coughs> moving the camera around I found it best to use the um, uh, the twist um, axis is, is where I look uh, right and left um, and then I have the up and down um so that's uh those those are basically the essential settings as you can see from the controls menu i've got quite a few controllers i've got four of them all together um so the logitech g29 uh, i love it really recommend it um i've got a gamepad um that i use for some of the functions uh this usb game controller is a thrust master joystick that i took apart and have then used for engine start and uh, turn signal and that kind of stuff and then I've got the Logitech Extreme joystick <coughs> for um, for camera functions. Um, so here with the transmission um, you can choose different modes and for a regular game the economy mode works quite fine um, I mean for a regular cargo. Um, switching to the high power helps you but it, it um, I mean it helps you when you have a heavy load but um, it does also then use more fuel so I mean what I kind of don't get is how come these modes aren't available with buttons because um, that just feels weird that I have to go into the um, settings to set that because that, that's something that for real with an automatic you would want to be able to switch as you drive right so uh, yeah um it's here um so you have to go into the settings to to, to set that i would have wanted to do that from the steering wheel uh steering sensitivity at least with the g29 you want to set that to um 100 so that um a non-linearity to zero that gives you pretty much a one-to-one -one relationship between the steering wheel that you have and the one that's in the game <coughs> and it gives a really good feel. Uh, the force feedback on the uh, G29 is really good. Um, I've had some other steering wheels too where it's worked perfectly fine. <coughs> what I found is that um, I like to set the gain to absolute maximum. So crank it up, um, put the gain up there. <coughs> Otherwise there comes this um, zone kind of in the middle when the steering wheel is in the middle that doesn't really do anything and you can you can't kind of feel the steering wheel at all and then suddenly as you start moving then you get the centering effect if you put the gain all the way to the maximum um, you, you get you get kind of the stiffness and the centering applied all over so um, if you feel that like I've got my stiffness just uh, just a little down from the middle um, that to me feels pretty much like the real thing that the truck steering wheels even with the power steering are are a little they're a little more rigid than your regular car um, so so go ahead and keep some stiffness there but uh, if you think it's too much turn it down uh, keep the gain up but you know adjust the stiffness according to your preference um, go ahead and let it be a little rougher than your car um, centering, I love the function. Um, I've got that then a little bit further down <coughs> than the stiffness. The engine, uh, <laughs> it's a little weird. Um, even with the gain set further down, the steering wheel kind of sh shakes badly whenever you use the engine, and uh, that's just uh, no. That, that you know, you don't really feel the engine that much in the steering wheel so I've got that like on I, I like the effect a little bit so I keep it at kind of like one notch that's the most I'll give it and even then I think it's almost too much 
Um, terrain dampers, collision according to your preference. I like to, um, to keep it there, collisions particularly. Um, I don't collide much, um, but when I do, I like to feel it. Um, the G29 allows for um, pretty, m yeah, I, I don't have any dead zone applied, so all of that down. Um, <coughs> then um, the looking up and down, I've got on a joystick where the um, mode has to be inverted and centered. Uh, I've got some dead zone on that just to um, just so that the camera doesn't go without me wanting to. Uh, and I put the looking left right on rotation. <coughs> um, yeah. Then the layouts are, are according to your truck, of course. You know, uh, ZF for Dolph and um, Mercedes and Iveco. Um, I guess the Renault too would be uh, ZF unless you um, unless the Renaults are always automatic. I don't know. Um, and then the Scania and Volvo have their own. Um, so I've um, yeah I took this joystick apart and um, I like this uh, switch mode uh, that you can use on shifter um, and I've got separate uh, I, uh, since I switch sometimes to um, automatic for different trucks um, I like to have that in the middle of the joystick of the um, gear stick um, so that was th yeah I think we've been through um, I'll go through if you're still with me I'll a little bit go through graphics um, my regular resolution and why the videos are maybe a little weird is f 50 40 times 1050 um, so I've got three screens connected to get a proper kind of immersive widescreen um, setup um, and then I have to crop that when I make videos so I still like to um, I still like to share with you kind of the view of seeing both mirrors always uh, so just bear with me on that. Um, I've managed to um, up the quality of the recording, so that should help a little bit on the experience. Um, a lot of this is just according to your graphics card. Um, I've decided to turn anti-aliasing off um, to help it breathe just a little bit um, because there's other things that I prefer. Uh, reflection detail. That, that's one that I encourage to, to keep on high if possible just because the visuals of the game are so much better um, it, this this reflection really really matters in terms of um, of the visual experience um, other than that I would um, prioritize mirror uh, so I've got my quality on medium that's about as much as the graphics card can handle uh, but distance on high um, matters to me uh, this normal maps, if if you're if you're needing to help your graphics card a little bit, you can go ahead and turn off as far as I've understood, because um, that that requires much more. Yeah. Um, so we've been through. Um, these are my settings, um, and a little bit of discussing kind of what what would be real real and realistic around that. Um, next episode, we'll get back to uh, taking this Mercedes for a uh, spin and why I like it. Uh, and also a little bit think about, should I take the next loan or not? You know, um, I've got the 100,000 loan. I've just been offered a 500,000 loan because I advanced to level 10. Uh, using Momo's economy mod, is that a wise decision or would that just be plain stupid? Uh, we'll get back to that in the next episode. Hope to see you then. Bye-bye.